Well, good morning, boys and girls. I hope you are all keeping well. We're going to do another song this morning, and it's a song I think all of you should know. Um, and there's lots of good actions to go along with this song as well. So I want to hear lots of good singing. The words should be up on the screen somewhere. Um, and lots of good actions as well. The song is called All Through History. Let's go. Excellent. That was some great singing and some great actions there as well. Um, before we move on to the rest of SML this morning, we're just going to pray. So if you would like to close your eyes and pray with me. Dear God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this time where we can come together and we can, uh, we can sing songs and we can learn about you. So I pray that you would be with us this morning as we yeah, as we learn more about you and about who you are. In your name we pray. Amen. Amazing. I'm going to hand over to Fiona, who is going to tell us our story this morning. But make sure you are listening carefully, because there's going to be a bit of a quiz afterwards, and the Bassets are going to lead us in that quiz. So make sure you're paying attention to Fiona telling us this story. Hola. Jumbo. Shalom. Hi, boys and girls. Do you know what I've just said to you? Yes, I've said hello in four different languages. French, Spanish, Swahili and Hebrew. And if you went to visit countries around the world, you might have to speak a different language. Maybe some of you already learn languages in school because the world is a very big place and sometimes whenever you go to different countries well you might just have to change a little bit the way you are and learn how to speak the way they speak. Do you know how many people there are in the world? Any guesses? Well there are over seven billion. Now 
if you want to know how many a billion is, you ask an adult at home and see if they can explain to you. But really all we need to know is it's a lot of people. And in the Bible it tells us that God loved the world. In fact, he loved the world so much he gave his son to die for us. So that all the wrong things that we had done and all those other billions of people have done, he's forgiven. So when he says the world, he doesn't just mean the world like the way we think of it. He means the people who live in the world. And we've been hearing a story over the last few weeks about a man in the Bible who spent a lot of time going to tell people about Jesus and his love. Do you remember who it was? That's right, Paul. Of course, he wasn't always called Paul. Do you remember he started out as Saul? And he really didn't like Christians. In fact, he was very angry and very nasty and cruel to them until God said, why are you doing this? And then he changed and his name changed too. So he became Paul. And we heard about Paul going to lots of countries in the world that he knew. Now the world in those days wasn't as many countries as we have today because they hadn't all been found at that stage. But he went to all the places that he knew of and especially Rome because that remember was the most important the most important city to go to. But it wasn't always easy for him, sure it wasn't. Can you remember what happened on his journeys? Yes, he was put in prison for telling people about God and how much he loved them. He was shipwrecked, mm -hmm. bitten by a snake, yeah. So Paul had a pretty awful time sometimes, but he didn't stop trusting God. Because he trusted God, he knew that God was with him because God has told us that he's always with us even when things are not easy. And there were great things happened as well. Can you remember how people started to believe in God because of what Paul had told them? People were healed, that's right. And eventually Paul did get to Rome, even though he maybe didn't get there as quickly as he thought he would. But he didn't give up, he didn't stop kept looking. Do you remember last week we heard about how it was like a race and he kept looking towards the end. He didn't stop and look around, he kept going. Well today we're going to think about people who still do that. There are people who still go and tell other people in other parts of the world about how much God loves them and how much he wants them to be his friends. So first of all I want you to have a little look at this. Okay so first of all we've got this one. Right, we all know what that colour is, red. So let's put it up here, there we go. The next one we have is this one, orange, well done. And lastly, green. And we'll put it at the bottom. Now, some of you are probably way ahead of me and you thought, hmm, that reminds me of something. Red, orange and green. Yes, if you're ever out in the car, they're an adult and they're driving along, you might see traffic lights that look just like this. And we're going to use those to help us think about missionaries and how we can maybe help them. So remember, missionaries are people you're telling other people about how much God loves them. Red. What does red mean? Stop. So if somebody's driving the car and the red is lit up, they have got to stop and wait. And unfortunately, there are countries in the world where Christians are not allowed to meet. They're not allowed to get together. They're not allowed to tell other people about God. Missionaries are not allowed to go into those countries and it's very sad. So we want to remember those countries and we want to see if maybe we can keep praying that God will help the people who rule those countries to let missionaries in, to let people come in and tell how much God loves them and just what God has done for them. And then we've got amber and amber is or orange getting ready. So if that light is lit up, you're getting ready. You're not going, you're not stopping, you're getting ready. 
And we're thinking about missionaries who are getting ready. So people who maybe God has a plan for to go to some other country to tell people about him and to share his love. What would they have to do? Can you think back to the beginning whenever I was saying hello to you in different languages? Yeah, they might have to learn another language if you're going to a country where people don't speak English. They might have to get together some money because they're going to have to go and get to the other country. They might have a church here who are praying for them. They might be thinking about the things they're going to take out when they go as missionaries. What will they need when they go out to tell people about God? And then the last one, green. So what does green mean? Go. Yes, it means go. And when Paul was told to go, he went. He didn't think, oh, I don't know. He was so excited about telling people how much God loved them that he wanted to go. And God is telling us to do that today. He's saying, go. Go and tell people. Now, you don't have to go to a foreign country or somewhere that's very far away. You can be a missionary or you can tell people about Jesus and how much he loves them. Just people that you know, people in school, friends, family, people that you just meet but live in the same place that you do. So when we're thinking about our missionaries, and you might know people who are missionaries, or maybe you could ask your mum or dad or your adult at home to help you find out a bit more about who missionaries are today and where they, which countries they're in. But what you want to do is to think about how we can pray for them and help them. So we're going to pray that the countries that say, no, you can't come in and tell people about Jesus will change. We're going to pray for people who are getting ready to be missionaries and go in God's plan for them to go to somewhere else, that they will have everything they need. And then we're going to pray that people will want to be missionaries, that we all will want to tell people how much God loves them and his plans for them. And now it's over for our quiz. Hello boys and girls, I hope you're doing well. Today our quiz will not be on what, about our story earlier, but what we have been learning for the past few weeks. And as always, we have a special guest with us today. Yeah. So our quiz will be about missionaries. And instead of the game, we're going to be learning how to make the perfect paper airplane with a handy helper. So the first question is, what is a missionary? Yeah, someone who tells others about the Lord Jesus. People who travel to other countries and tell all the people who don't hear as much about God, about God. So the first step of making a perfect paper airplane is going and getting one piece of paper. Not that hard. Before, for the second question, before Saul met Jesus, how did he treat Christians? He wanted to put them in jail because he thought they were wrong in believing that the Lord Jesus was the Son of God and that he was alive. So Saul didn't believe anything before he met Jesus. He hated Christians. So for the second step in how to make the perfect paper airplane is fold it lengthwise in half all the way down, corners matching. Simple as it sounds. Now for the third question, what happened to change Paul's mind about Jesus? What changed him from hating Christians to becoming one? The Lord Jesus appeared in a blinding light on the road to Damascus. So while Paul was traveling, a bright light appeared and it was the Lord Jesus Christ. For the third step, of making the perfect paper airplane is opening it back out so it's flat um, for the fourth question easy one what is sin? 
Sin is breaking God's rules and laws, so just disobeying of what he wants us to do. And for the fourth step of making a perfect paper airplane is putting the corners to the middle on both sides. Yeah, or one side even, sorry. For the fifth question, what does the word gospel mean? You might have heard this from the gospel club or good news club in primary school. The word gospel means good news. The good news that Jesus died to take the punishment for sin and he rose back up again. And for the fifth step is doing the exact same on the other side, the corner to the middle. The sixth question. If you are a Christian, how can you be a missionary? How could you go and travel and tell people about God? By telling your friends and family about the Lord Jesus and also showing them by how you live that God has changed you. Just to show that you're different from when you were before. So for the sixth step, we'll turn it around. Fold the tiny triangle into the middle. For the seventh question, what can you do for missionaries who are teaching the gospel in other parts of the world? How can we help everybody who's traveling and telling other people about God? We can pray for them, donate money to support them, or send them cards, or just any nice letters to encourage them and remind them that they're doing a good job. For the se seventh step, doing the same on the other side. For the eighth question, what does it say in Acts chapter 1 verses 8? That's a bit hard for you to know. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. For the eighth step of how to make a perfect paper airplane, we're going to fold it in half. Very simple. What does it say in Luke chapter 10 verses 2, another Bible verse? The harvest truly is great, but the labourers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. And for the ninth step, we're going to bend it backwards and fold the wee tiny clips in. To the center. It's nearly done. For the tenth question, the final question, what do you need to know to become a Christian? <laughs> Turn from your sin and trust the Lord Jesus to forgive you for all your sin.